the white matter of cerebrum uh, comprises of the nerve tracts. The nerve tracts that are either passing from one hemisphere of the cerebrum to the other hemisphere or connecting different regions within the same cerebral hemisphere or connecting the uh, cerebrum as a whole with different other parts of the brain. So according, uh, accordingly, they are divided into three types. Commissural fibers, association fibers, and projection fibers. So the nerve tract fibers that form the white matter of the cerebrum are grouped into three categories, into three types. Some fibers are labeled as commissural fibers. Some fibers are labeled as association fibers and the other fibers are labeled as projection fibers. Now let's see what are the different nerve tracts that form these three categories of nerve fibers and what parts of the brain are they connecting to each other. So let's start with the commissural fibers. Uh, commercial fibers from the white matter of cerebrum are those fibers that connect the corresponding regions of two cerebral hemispheres. So basically, in broad terms, these fibers are connecting one cerebral hemisphere to the other cerebral hemisphere. So commercial fibers are further categorized into at least four types of fibers. The very famous and largest one is the corpus callosum. Other two include the anterior and posterior commissures. And then we have fornix, which was part of limbic system, and heavenular commissure. Among these types of commissural fibers, corpus callosum is of great significance, not only from clinical point of view, but also it is a commonly asked SAQ in the final professional examinations for both BDS and second year MBBS. So this topic uh, is um, <clears throat> almost 99% asked in the SAQs from the um, topic of white matter of cerebrum. So let's start with the corpus callosum. As I defined earlier that since it's a commercial fiber, largest commercial fiber, so it is going to connect the corresponding regions of two cerebral hemispheres. It has four parts. Anatomically, corpus callosum ke char parts hote hain. Number one, we have rostrum. Number two, genu. Number three, body. And number four, splenium. So here in this diagram on the left side, you can see the different parts. This is the anterior frontal lobe and this is the occipital lobe. So from anterior to posterior or front to back, we have rostrum. The anterior most end of the corpus callosum is labeled as rostrum. Next to it comes the bend. Ek mod aata hai, ek bend aata hai. This bend is called genu. Behind the genu, <clears throat> there is the trunk or body of the corpus callosum. And the posterior end of the corpus callosum is labeled as splenium. So then we have some fibers that are arising from the corpus callosum and going into the different lobes. For example, the fibers that arise from the anterior end of the corpus callosum and move towards the frontal lobe, moving into the frontal lobe, 
they are labeled as uh, forceps minor. And these fibers usually arise uh, from the genome. So here in this diagram on the right side, uh, you can see forceps minor is labeled in uh, anterior to the <clears throat> corpus callosum. So some fibers from the genome part of the corpus callosum, they may arise, uh, they uh, actually arise and move into the frontal lobe and these fibers are labeled as forceps minor. So some fibers, they arise uh, from the splenium of the corpus callosum and they move into the occipital lobe. These fibers are labeled as forceps major. And still some fibers from the body or trunk of the corpus callosum, they curve laterally. They curve laterally into the cerebral hemisphere where they intersect with the association and projection fibers, which were the two other categories of white matter of cerebrum. And these fibers are also called radiation of corpus callosum. And when these fibers arising from the trunk, when they form the roof and lateral wall of the um, lateral ventricle, uh, lateral ventricle is the space, uh, is the cavity of the cerebral hemisphere. So when the fibers from the trunk, they form a roof and lateral wall of the uh, lateral ventricle, those fibers are labeled as tectum. So then we have anterior and posterior commissures. In this uh, diagram, especially on the left side, these two uh, red and blue dots are shown. Uh, these are uh, showing the location of the anterior and posterior commissures. So anterior commissure, uh, since the name is indicating it is located anteriorly, these bundle of fibers, they pass, uh, uh, they cross the midline, right? And um, small, they are divided or they are comprising of two bundles, a small anterior bundle and a large posterior bundle. The small anterior bundle, it curves laterally to the <clears throat> olfactory tract. Whereas the large posterior bundle, uh, it is closely associated <clears throat> with the basal ganglia, uh, one of the nucleus, that is a lentiform nucleus, to reach the temporal lobe. These two bundles are not diagram in this diagram. But uh, you just need to uh, memorize them as such uh, because anterior and posterior commissions are uh, uncommon uh, exam questions uh, in the written examination of the university. So for you, it is just uh, enough to know the location uh, of the anterior commissure and posterior commissure as well. Posterior commissure, it also crosses in the midline and it is related to the uh, stalk. Here in this diagram, this is the posterior commissure, right? And just below this commissure, we have the midbrain, section of midbrain, right? I hope you can uh, remember the parts of brain stem. Here we have the pons, next to it is the medulla, and here we have the posterior aspect of the midbrain, right? Where the two colliculi you can see, superior and inferior colliculus. Just above them, you can see uh, that we have a posterior commissure, right? And anteriorly, this, uh, this bulge or this um, spot that you can see is the anterior commissure. Right, and uh, the posterior commissure, it is related to the inferior part of the stalk for the pituitary gland, right? And um, also, is kehte hain ki posterior commissure mein se jo bundles guzarte hain, wo kis kisam ke bundles guzar rahe hain posterior commissure mein kis kisam ke nerve fibers ke bundles guzar rahe hain? Papillary jo hamare paas papillary light reflex hai. Uske fibers jo hain, wo guzar rahe hote hain, on their way to parasynthetic part of the oculomotor nuclei. Aapko pata hai, oculomotor ka nucleus jo hai, wo midbrain mein pada hua hai. So this was the fourth uh, commercial fiber is the fornix and fornix is a very important uh, part or component of the uh, uh, limbic system particularly forming an efferent pathway for the hippocampus. So habinular commissure is the nerve bundle fiber in the white matter of cerebrum that is connecting the <clears throat> habinular nuclei on either side 
of the dyne cephalon. And these, uh, this set of fibers is located in front of the pineal gland. So association fibers are the type of white metal fibers comprising of those nerve tracts that connect the various cortical regions within the same hemisphere, within the same cerebral hemisphere. They comprise of two main types of nerve fibers, the long association fibers and short association fibers. The short association fibers, as you can see in this diagram on the right side of the slide, they are lying immediately under the cortical regions of the cerebrum and they are shown to be connecting the adjacent gyri with each other. Second, we have long association fibers that are further divided into uncinate fasciculus, cingulum, superior longitudinal fasciculus, inferior longitudinal fasciculus, and fronto-occipital fasciculus. The uncinate fasciculus, they are connecting and related with the speech area, the motor speech area with the temporal lobe. Cingulum, however, is going to connect the frontal and parietal lobes with parahippocampus and adjacent temporal cortical regions. Superior longitudinal fasciculus is the largest bundle and it is connecting the anterior frontal lobe with the occipital and temporal lobes. The inferior longitudinal fasciculus is coming from the occipital till the temporal lobes. Projection fibers, they comprise of the afferents and the efferents that pass to and from the brainstem to the cerebral cortex. These fibers at upper part of the brainstem form a very compact band known as, and please record this, it is a very famous projection fiber, the internal capsule. It is itself is a a separate topic that needs to be discussed in detail. 